Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the portion of God's Word that we want to meditate on this Good Friday is from the Gospel lesson that was read earlier. We'd like to think about just one verse, verse 30, which reads, When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the Word of the Lord. February 5th, 2017 marked an unparalleled surrender. If you're racking your brain trying to think, well, what, what war ended on February 5th? What battle came to a conclusion? Is it something in, in maybe Syria that they didn't hear about? Was it something maybe in Afghanistan or somewhere else in the world? If you need a little help jogging your memory, let me remind you that February 5th, 2017, was Super Bowl Sunday. And that Sunday, the Atlanta Falcons surrendered. I mean, I don't know what else you'd call it when they blew a 25-point lead that they held as late as the third quarter of the game. They allowed the New England Patriots to, to come back and score 25 unanswered points to tie the game up, and then they allowed the New England Patriots to walk down the field almost effortly, effortlessly in overtime to score the game-winning touchdown. To drive home just how unparalleled that, that surrender was, before that game, the biggest deficit ever overcome in a Super Bowl game was a measly 10 points. Now this morning, when you saw in your bulletins the theme for the sermon, the greatest surrender, I would imagine you didn't think you'd be hearing about the most recent Super Bowl. There's a different surrender that you and I have gathered to think about today. A surrender that doesn't involve athletes, doesn't even involve guns or missiles or wars. The surrender that we've come to meditate on today is a surrender far greater than any other. It is indeed the greatest surrender that has ever happened. It is Christ's surrender on the cross. Perhaps you think you've just heard your pastor misspeak. But no. You heard me right. Christ surrendered on the cross. That seems a little strange. I mean, normally when we think about the cross, if anybody's surrendering there at the cross, we think, well, Satan is surrendering. Death and hell and sin are surrendering. I mean, that verse that I just read to you, right in the middle of that verse, isn't there Jesus' triumphant cry, it is finished? When Jesus proclaimed, it is finished, wasn't he saying that all the sins of the world had been paid for? When he announced that statement, wasn't he saying that, that all of the promises of rescue that God had made in the scriptures now stood fulfilled? That, that cry that came out of that throat, wetted with sour wine, was that not an announcement that there is no sin left for you to pay? That cry Jesus made, it is finished. It announces that there is now no wrong that Satan can point to and condemn you with before God. That statement, it is finished, what is that other than an announcement of triumph and victory? And I'm not going to dispute that. That was a cry of triumph. And yet our Savior Jesus still surrendered on that cross. It's a surrender that almost just kind of gets lost in the shadow of that great announcement. But John tells us that after Jesus said, it is finished, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. There on the cross, Jesus surrendered. He surrendered his spirit into the hands of his heavenly Father. I didn't misspeak when I said that Christ surrendered on that cross. And yet you might wonder, why make such a big deal about that? Why, why <coughs> kind of build that up as this, this great surrender? Why bother to focus on that surrender Jesus made of his spirit? Well, for a moment, let's set aside the death of Jesus. And let's just think about death in general for a moment. Perhaps, perhaps 
thinking about death in general is a little bit too generic. Think actually about the death of someone you know. Have you ever watched someone go through that process of dying? Have you ever watched someone slowly waste away their body, becoming weaker and weaker? It's a horrible sight, isn't it? It's horrific to see someone lying in a bed and to watch them gasp and pant and struggle to take every breath. It's a hard thing. It's something that's abhorrent to us. And it's not just abhorrent to us when we see it happen. It's abhorrent whenever we think about it, whenever we talk about it. I mean, just think about the way that we speak of death. When someone dies of cancer, what do we usually say? We say that person lost their battle with cancer. When someone has a terminal illness, we talk about how they fight that illness. What do we say when we sit at the bedside of a loved one and hold their hand? We say, be strong. We use that language of the battlefield because death is the enemy. It's an enemy that we struggle against, that we fight against. It's an enemy that we fear. And we use that language of the battlefield. Not just for the sake of that person who's lying in the bed. But we say it for our own sakes. We say it because it's not just that person who's lying there who's afraid of death, but we're afraid of death. We're afraid of it because we know that someday we're going to lie here. And that fear of death, it follows us all our lives. It's that fear of death that, that kind of lurks in the shadows of our thoughts and our youth and drives us to, to eat healthy and to exercise and stay fit. It's that fear of death that, that creeps a little closer to us in middle age and drives us to, to finally go to the doctor, even though we think the doctors are usually quacks and even though we, we don't like to pay the money for them to, to have to diagnose us. That fear of death it isn't just reserved for terminal illnesses and for the extreme end of old age. That fear of death is something that we battle every day of our lives. And it's when you're there staring down that fear of death that your God points you to the cross. He points you to his son. The son who bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The son who surrendered there on the cross. Surrendered his spirit. And what makes this surrender so great, what makes it so amazing, so remarkable, so unparalleled is that there isn't the struggle, is there? There isn't the fear and the terror. Jesus simply gives up his spirit. It's almost as if death can't even come near him. It's like death is, is too afraid to approach Jesus on that cross and, and has to stand at arm's length and can only come near when Jesus finally permits him to come. It says something about that surrender Jesus makes on the cross. It says something about his power. As an early believer, and observed how great the power to be hoped for that must be his as judge if such was the power that he exhibited as a dying man. You think about that. The power over death that Jesus displayed on the cross in that simple act of bowing his head and giving up his spirit shows that, that he must certainly have power over death now that he is no longer humbled, now that he sits in glory in heaven and will someday come again with his angel hosts. And that surrender of Jesus on the cross, it not only gives you and me comfort and confidence that someday when he returns, he's going to raise our bodies, that surrender gives you and me comfort and confidence in our daily struggle against death. Yes, it's that you face an enemy. But thanks to that surrender of Christ, you face a conquered enemy. You face an enemy that need not frighten you. Because you face that enemy with the Savior at your side, the same Savior, who had the comfort and the confidence to be able to bow his head and give up his spirit. And even though Jesus has not given to you the same privilege to pick the moment of your last breath, that Savior Jesus has given to you the awesome privilege and right to surrender your spirit into the hands of your Heavenly Father. <coughs> when you die,
die. It is not a defeat, even though it is a surrender. It is not a defeat because at your death you do not surrender your spirit into the cold hands of death, but you surrender it into the loving hands of your heavenly Father. A Father who, just as he took you in his own arms in the waters of your baptism, takes you into his arms there at the moment of death and takes you to himself. And all of that is assured and guaranteed by that simple fact that Christ bowed his head and surrendered his spirit. That is indeed the greatest surrender that has ever happened. It isn't a surrender that, that amuses us like in a Super Bowl game. It isn't a surrender that brings us a mere earthly peace like at the end of a war. The surrender of Christ's spirit on the cross. It is the only surrender that makes a difference in the struggle and war against death. And so it is my prayer, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that you may have comfort. Comfort in the knowledge that through Christ's surrender, death has been conquered for you. Amen. Please stay. And now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.